hello, we are Post. Uh, I'm Giancarlo. I'm Ryan. I'm also Ryan. I'm Chelsea. Uh, I'm Nathan. And we are the Plant Operation Smartphone Tracker Team. Uh, so just to give a brief background on POST, uh, we focus on streamlining the data collection process. So prior to POST, uh, data was recorded for the logbooks, as you see on the screen. Uh, this was clearly an unsustainable process for a number of reasons. One, it's just a very tedious way to do it, manually inputting it by hand. Two, it's very error prone and prone to being lost, given that's held in one physical location. And three, it's a lot more difficult for us here in Cornell to keep track of how the plants in Honduras are doing if we can't have access to the physical logbooks. So in general, we were, like, we were posters to improve that process, and we're here to kind of digitalize it and make it much more sustainable. So to give a quick recap of our main tasks for this semester, uh, we had four main tasks that we wanted to accomplish. The first was to switch from Google Fusion Tables to Firebase as our database. Um, as we had explained at symposiums, this switch was necess is necessary because Google Fusion Tables is going to be discontinued come this December. So obviously we do not want to lose all of our data. So in order to deal with this, we are changing over to a different database, which is Firebase. Uh, the second main task for the semester was to set up the automated email service. As we had mentioned before, um, we have this issue currently where plant operators are not regularly sending in data. And obviously if we're not receiving data regularly, then it's very hard to keep track of how the plants are doing and as great as the platform may be, it's not going to much use. So we are hoping to constantly remind them to send in data by sending up an email service that will send them alerts to send data, encourage them to continue to send it if they have been doing so, or kind of let them know that they've not been doing a great job sending data and that they should send more data. The third task for the semester was to make small improvements to the Angular site and the play by the end of the semester. And most of the main functionality of the Angular site is there. There's a few other features we wanted to add, such as a table component and some minor UI issues that we wanted to flesh out. And so our goal with the Angular site was just to work on those minor improvements and get them done. And lastly, we wanted to fix bugs with the ODK forms. And we learned that there are some issues with the ODK forms in the sense that there are some questions that are a bit repetitive, and as well, a big issue is that one has to enter, has to answer every question uh, for the form to pass over to the next question to submit the form, when, which is not good because not all plants have the same parameter or have the same, have to answer the same data, uh, data prompts. Um, so it's not very versatile for the different plants. So going with the first issue of the semester, which was backing up our data from Google Fusion Tables to Firebase, uh, this task consists of two main parts. The first was to set the new incoming data to be published to Firebase directly instead of just to Google Fusion Tables. And the second is to, or was to back up the existing data to Firebase as well. So going with the first one, uh, this was the first step was to publish our new data to Firebase and this was done fairly simply. So in our application, the data as recorded in the ODK forms initially goes to ODK aggregate, which is sort of a built-in database with, which a lot, with a lot more limited capabilities and provided by ODK. So in ODK aggregate, there's a simple feature to export data to a different database. Uh, so just a matter of putting in our data, Firebase database API and having the data exported over. So data is currently being published to Firebase. The second part of this was backing up our old data from that was in Google Fusion Tables and ODK Aggregate to Firebase. So originally, this didn't seem to, we had some troubles with this because it did not seem to be working. And ODK has a feature to export all old data as well to the database. However, given that we are only using the free version, there is a quota to how much data you can uh, work with at a time. And so every time, given that we have a lot of data, every time we try to export, um, the program would kind of crash because we had reached the quota limit and we cannot access Aggregate for 12 hours. So initially we thought that this meant that it was not working and that it would kept just failing after sending the initial data points. However, later we learned that what was actually happening is that after the 12 hour timeout limit was passed, um, ODK would resume publishing from where it left off. So in reality, the data was getting continually published. We were just did not know that. So now all the data has been copied over and it's all officially backed up onto Firebase. So we successfully made the switch from relying on Google Fusion Tables to using Firebase as our database. Um, yeah, 
so like John Carlo mentioned, um, we've finished the Angular site before. Um, right now our problem is that a lot of plant operators do not send the necessary amount of data daily, weekly, monthly to us so we can properly gauge and plot and data visualize it. So our, our idea was to create an email server, which is basically a Python script that will send uh, automated bi-weekly or monthly emails to the plant operators letting them know about their progress. Um, this is an example, as seen on the slideshow, of the graphs that we produce through our email script. Uh, these email scripts look at the data from the past 30 days of a specific plant operator's plant and sends them a graph letting them know how much data they've actually logged. Um, the data is taken straight from the Firebase database that John Carlo just mentioned, so it is sustainable with the new features and the new versions of the data that we've imported over. Um, this is an example of an actual test email that was sent out. Um, the graphs are sent through this automated email service to op uh, update the plant operators. And we also implemented a check that basically looks at the amount of data that was sent by the operator and customizes the message accordingly. So if the operator hasn't sent data in the past uh, 20 days, we'll look at that and the script will basically tell them, hey, um, you look like you're lacking on data, uh, we really need you to step it up. Uh, conversely, if the data operator is doing a great job and sending in all the data for the plant over the past 30 days, we'll let them know that they're, they're doing a great job and kind of praise them and let them know that to keep up the good work. Um, right now, because that is completely implemented and will be run, run on the AWS server that Ryan will uh, talk about, uh, what we are doing right now is looking at weather information through API calls. Uh, right now, we can actually tell the plant operators, like, hey, this is the weather for the next seven days or more. And what we're trying to do right now is look at the data from the Firebase uh, side and look at the weather and see if there's any correlation between the two. Uh, we're looking at clustering and di different data analytics. Uh, that's something we're going to continue in the next semester. So as Nathan mentioned, my job here was to connect the email script to Amazon Web Services. So the main thing that we wanted to use service for is that um, it would be cumbersome to just use one of our laptops every morning on Monday at 8 a.m. to then send the emails. So we thought the best point of action was to use a server so then we can offload that power to that. So we tried multiple things and we finally left on using an EC2 instance from Amazon Web Services. Um, and so this, uh, this option was the best because it was just the easiest to add and it still had a free tier so we didn't have to use money and then uh, it's easier to add more to and to uh, make it larger as a whole. And so, so what we did here is that uh, I, uh, I pushed the email script that Nick has talked about to an EC2 instance and then by adding all the Python dependencies we were able to get it running. Um, and then to schedule it, we used Chrome tabs and we scheduled it to be every Monday at 8 a.m. And once we get the emails from the board members that John Carlo and Nathan has been talking about, uh, the way uh, we'll just push that to the code that's going on the email script and then all the emails will uh, go to the board members to, uh, in Honduras to notify the operators on how they're doing. And in the process, actually, we just made an Agua Clara Amazon Web Services that is open to any of the teams, and any teams can utilize all the servers there, all the instances there, if they need to. So my main task this semester is to optimize the user experience of our Angular site. Um, for Elmo Clara. Um, so right now the website is functioning well, but there's still a few minor points that we need to fix to make sure the user experience will be better. And the first task um, is um, previously the website automatically goes to a blank page instead of showing data. Um, now uh, we fixed it and when users enter the website right now, they're gonna see um, they, they are automatically directed to um, a specific page of a plan, so they could view um, the graph of, the, of all the data collected by that plan. And the second thing is um, we remove the extra downloads tab on the page. 
Um, so previously there's a download section, but people can't actually download anything from that, so we just remove that. Um, and another thing is, um, um, besides graph, we add a table feature to um, show all the specific numbers that we collected for all the plants. Um, so for the for the for the graph feature, the good thing is that people could view the trend and all the data visualization of all the data we collected from the plants. But um, the drawback is they couldn't actually check the specific number. Um, except they actually click on that, and also it takes a long time to see all the data. Um, so uh, we decided to implement a table component. The table component has five variables, um, raw water turbidity, set water turbidity, filter water turbidity, coagulant dose, and time finish. So with this table, users can easily check um, the data collected from all the plants without actually clicking and hovering over the graphs to view all the numbers. Um, so uh, in the future, we might want to implement another feature called paging, because right now when people click into the table component, they will see all the data uh, retrieved from the database, which will take a long time to load. Um, so with the paging feature, users could choose um, how much data they want to view instead of viewing all the data at one time. And so as John Carlo mentioned earlier, we work to improve the flow of the ODK forms. Uh, so currently the form that the plant operators have been filling out um, has a couple of features that make it less um, easy to use. So we work to resolve some of those and just improve the overall flow of the form. Um, so we work to streamline the current ODK form, um, not changing too many of the questions, but more so just um, changing the requirements so that if the plant operator only wants to upload data for one component, they don't have to fill out the entire form all at once. And so with um, the improved forms and the email reminders together, um, we hope that this will increase the responsiveness of the plant operators. And so um, overall, we think we have achieved our goal to make the forms more convenient for plant operators to use. Um, and hopefully we will start to see the results and so the next thing that we um, took a look at was to look into iOS alternatives to um, ODK because currently ODK is only compatible with Android devices. And so currently um, there are a number of projects online that are seeking to fill this role. Um, for example, um, the many uh, companies that have been working on um, stuff, things like this have, are listed below. And so uh, we have taken it upon ourselves this semester to look into um, the projects that are already out there, um, try to see which ones might suit our needs and align the best with ODK so we don't have to create two separate forms and maintain both of them, um, but rather looking for one that will allow us to just use the same form um, in the two different applications. And so um, currently we have selected a few of these that we think are the most promising and we hope to begin uh, working with them next semester. Uh, so just to wrap up, I'll discuss some of the future tasks for post as a whole in the coming semesters. Uh, so the first is to actually deploy the email server. All the code is finished and the, uh, the script is properly scheduled on AWS. However, we are still waiting on the list of emails of plant operators from Minty and Honduras. So as soon as we get those, we can deploy the server and hopefully see the benefits. Uh, the second is to, is what Nathan had mentioned about incorporating other relevant information with the data we are currently collecting, such as weather data. And uh, we we're hoping that that will help spot certain trends in the data that will be more, u more useful to anyone hoping to learn about the performance of avocadoric plants. And third, more generally, we just want to expand post uh, to help with other needs of avocadoric as a whole, or to interface with other apps and algorithms teams. Uh, most of the work that we had, that most of the work that was there for when post first started is kind of coming to its end, basically just about finished. So we want to see what other avenues post can help in. Okay, thank you.